All right, so um, Lulu keeps asking for me to prove it to him. Well, here's how simply it is to prove it to you. Only two disciples during Jesus' ministry has to reference that Jesus is both, male and female in one body. And guess who the first disciple is? Paul himself. <laughs> now, in... Galatians 3, verse 20. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Jesus is our mediator. <laughs> Go down to verse 27. <laughs> For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Right. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. Mm -hmm. There is neither bond nor free. Mm -hmm. There is neither male and female. Mm -hmm. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, mm -hmm. if you're one in Christ Jesus, he's your mediator between the Jew and the Gentile. The bond and the free, the male and the female, because you're one in his body, right? That he may understand both, either the male or the female, <laughs> right? The opposite of neither is either. <laughs> he is either, I don't know, Jew and Gentile, right? He is either bond and free, right? <laughs> As well, mm-hmm. So that means basically he's both, right? I don't know. Now, all I need is a second witness. And that's John referring to Jesus as being the door, right? And Jesus himself making the statement. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> In chapter 10, mm -hmm. the first verse opens up what he's talking about. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that enters in by the the door is the shepherd of the sheep. <laughs> to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his sh own sheep by name, mm -hmm. and leadeth them out. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Now, what is he talking of? His birth, right? Through the Virgin Mary, right? Now, man is going to get so advanced one day, they're going to try to start birthing us without a woman, right? What do you think it means? <laughs> they're going to create an artificial womb, right? Or something, right? So that you no have, longer have to be born, but are grown like in the Matrix, I don't know. Now, it's not that you're not human if you're born in the Matrix either, I know. But the problem with the Matrix is you're trying to eliminate the female. Mm -hmm. She's your door. Mm -hmm. Even Job said the doors of my mother's womb in Job 3.10 is how he entered into the congregation himself, right? <sighs> He wished the day he was born, he was shut in. Mm -hmm. All I need is two witnesses anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To infer mm -hmm, that Christ is both male and female somehow. Mm -hmm. Now this is called a metaphor. It's called a metaphor. But in 
three ten. Mm hmm. We can start in verse three if we want to. Let the day perish wherein I was born. Right. And the night in which it was said there is a man child conceit. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. <laughs> Least darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Lo, <laughs> let that night be solitary. <laughs> Let no joyful voice come therein. Let them curse it that curse the day who are ready to raise up their morning. Let the stars of the twilight thereof be dark. Let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day, because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, right. nor hid sorrow from mine eyes. <clears throat> now, even in Solomon, the maiden in question is called a door. Mm -hmm. And a wall, and a wall. In Solomon's eight, <laughs> her womb is the door. As the door. Also, your heart is a door. Your mouth is a door. Things go in and out of it. Though generally, it's just in, right? Right. Right now. Now, another thing is your mouth and butt are a bottomless pit. You ever think of that? <laughs> Satan casts himself into the bottom of the pit. What do you think that means? <laughs> <laughs> that ain't a sexual reference to Eden, metaphorically said? Yes, yes. <laughs> There's only one pit <laughs> on a male and a female and a hermaphrodite. That's the bottom of the pit. <laughs> and that's the butt. <laughs> From the mouth. <laughs> See, this is an opening. The butt is also an opening. <laughs> and it goes throughout your body. <laughs> There's no top or bottom to it. <laughs> is there technically? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> is there for a bottomless pit? <laughs> <Sorry, that was. laughs> but your bottom, okay, opens, right? And your top opens. Mm-hmm. Now, when you go to the bathroom, something comes out of it, right? <laughs> when you eat, something goes in it, right? <laughs> but with your heart, with your womb, <laughs> the sperm and egg go into the womb, <laughs> and out comes the baby. <laughs> Hello? Right? Your mind takes in good and bad thoughts, right? They go into it, they come out of it. <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's what it all means. There's not one reference to that. There's many. There's many. <laughs> but, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. A pit is bottomless because it opens on both ends, right? Do you understand what that means? <laughs> if if you have a hole that goes all the way through something, right? And though technically there's a top and a bottom, 
but there's no bottom for the hole. Mm -hmm. And there's no real top for it either, either. It's a hole with two ends where there's no top or bottom, right? See, see. <laughs> it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Now, where the metaphor in Eden starts ending is where Moses said, the man has become as one of us from the tree of life to Adam and Eve, right? There is something speaking to them in human form, right? Who do you think that is? Jesus himself, before he was born of the Virgin Mary and became the child Jesus, right? Those Christians teach this. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> If you don't understand it, you don't want to understand it. <laughs> and we can't make you. That's not a Christian's job is to try and explain it to you. But if you can't grasp it or you don't want to grasp it, a witness can't do more than that, right? <laughs> but show you what the Bible says. Now, also the fact that John used stethos, which is the Greek word for a male's chest, and Mastois, right, in Revelations, I told you this before, which King James interpreted as paps, which means female breasts, right? Boobs. In modern vernacular, or tits, right? The word is female tits, right? Not male tits, not male tits. Not man boobs, not Boobs, boobs. Now, John did use male boobs and female boobs, but Jesus could also metamorph. <sighs> and Peter, James, and John didn't even know who they were looking at. Mm -hmm. Were Christ male and Christ female from Christ and drunkenness? Another thing you don't understand about Adam's form is the woman was inside of him, right? And manifested outside of him and made in her own body, you know? And then the first body was made from both into fully male, right? And then the female was formed from the parts God took from him to make her. Mm -hmm. And it was bone and flesh, right? Because Adam himself identified her as once being in him. I know. He said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Right? The flesh is the feminine reproductive parts, right? Which God would remove from the male mm -hmm. to make him from one into two. Right? Their name was Adam in the day they were formed, right? Adam, male, and female, first in one body, then two, right? For what purpose? Reproduction, that he may seek a godly seed, according to Malachi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the reproductive purposes of natural reproduction, not scientific or science fiction, which you can make real to a point. <laughs> you can make real stuff science fiction-y. Why? Right. Because God gives you science. Right. That's what you're supposed to see. Right. Your problem is in hearing the entire word of God. Mm-hmm. But in the medical science knows of true hermaphrodites. Well, that would explain it if the angels have to become both, right? To become human, right? And they could even wear girdles like Jesus did, made of leather in the earth, right? Where they formed their body, right? See, unlike us, they already have an existence in the first estate, right? According to Peter in Jude, I know. 
they both have two existences. Sorry. One there and one here. Mm -hmm. Like any being, though, they're an extraterrestrial. <laughs> no. Two, two. They're supposed to stay in heaven and help us get there. <laughs> That's supposed to be their job. Right. They're not supposed to come here and have sex with our women because they're our women. <laughs> not their women. No, no. In fact, their wife is within them too. That's why they're not supposed to do that. Right. They, in fact, put the hermaphroditic gene into the gene pool and confuse us about the offspring. Right. But like God said through Ezekiel, if a hermaphrodite also realizes Jesus is the image of God, right, and him too, he must behave as Jesus, not as Satan did to sexually confuse us, right? Or the angels in Genesis chapter 6, right? And that's their sin. They took as many women as they wanted to life, right? And impregnated them with their offspring, right? And defiled the gene pool, right? With the gene, right? Of the hermaphrodites, right? Now, is it an unforgivable sin, though? No, no sin is unforgivable, right? Can a hermaphrodite live a normal life? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. But you want to cut off their penis and make them female, <laughs> Yes, you do, medical doctors, right? That's wrong, too. They're supposed to be a hermaphrodite as a sign of the sin in Eden and Genesis 6, right? It shows the angels had sex with the daughters of men, right? And it will produce X, X, Y if you're a hermaphrodite, right? Three X's instead of two, right? Oh, uh, but the two is from the angel. Hmm. I know. Which Peter and Jude both call them angels. Right. And you're taught to deny it. And you're taught to deny it by the Orthodox Church, which is siding with Emperor Constantine, which has been lying to us for 1,700 years. Yeah, this lie has been going on longer than the truth, which only made it to 325 AD. Right. Actually, it made it to about 500 because they started destroying the Gnostic Gospels or anything that suggested Christ was both. If they're doing that, it's called a cover-up, dumbass. Especially if it's within the first few hundred years of Christianity itself, and that's being brought out during the first, second, and third centuries, right? It's in the fourth century they tried to do away with it, right? Because Constantine, being a Roman emperor, could not handle the idea that Christ was a hermaphrodite. Right? Meaning he would have to serve Christ as a man under the hermaphroditic Christ. Right. Now, the middle image is male, yes. Yes. But it's not the first image the hermaphrodite is. And Emperor Constantine would have a problem being under a hermaphrodite. Yes. Yes, he would. So do you. So do you. <laughs> the only one who don't have a problem with it today is me because I saw God on its throne as a light. I know a light is neither male nor female, Jew nor Gentile, bond nor free. <laughs> it's the life inside of us. It's in all forms, right? <laughs> From Aphrodite, male and female, and the first form is both. <laughs> From which... Both came, right? For reproductive purposes, right? Now, if you cannot explain that, why did Moses write it out in the first place if he didn't want you to understand as much of it as you could back then, right? Same with Paul and John, right? I know. Now, two of the forms have breasts that can give milk. Mm -hmm. The hermaphrodite and the female. The male cannot produce milk, right? Either <laughs> you cannot nurse a child except with a bottle. Mm -hmm. Though even Job mentions the use of a, a bottle type instrument for a male. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Yes. But you were taught to deny it. <laughs> From Constantine to now, right? <laughs> King James tried to help a little bit, but that's because he was a big man and had man boobs. If you understand. <laughs> well, I kind of allowed it. <laughs> but then by George the Third, they're using sovereign immunity to get out, put uh, putting the Christians in jail and harming them under harsh punishments. Right. That's why we came here anyway. Mm -hmm. Freedom of religion. Freedom. Religion. But the problem is men oppress other men. Men persecute other men who believe differently than them. Men won't really let you have freedom of religion, will they? No. No. <laughs> the reason I know that is I found out about all this in the Navy. Right. I never heard of the Gnostic Gospels before I joined the Navy. Right. But there again, I'm exposed to the world. Right. Through the Navy, too. Right. So, of course, it came out in 93. I know. In an article in either U.S. News or World Report or one of them. Right. I know. About the Gnostic Gospels also being dis discovered like the, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls. But now they're wondering if they're a little fake. Because <laughs> they found salt on some of them. Right? Which there was no salt back then. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Right. Though nothing's perfect, but again... One could be truer, though, the Dagestan Library, the, the library out of Egypt. Right. They didn't find no salt, no nothing weird with their discovery, just the papyri, right? That the Gnostics wrote their beliefs on, right? Which was the same thing as in the vault of the Vatican, right? Where you have the Roman version of Christianity, right? The Gnostics taught of the first three centuries of early Christianity and how they believed Christ was androgynous and a hermaphrodite, as was Adam. As was Adam. <laughs> and they've been lying to us about it. Right. So what can you do? Realize the lying party is siding with Satan, but God's grace covered us till now. Right. We did not know. But if you know the truth, you got to let the truth make you free from the lie. From 